One night we got called in on an emergency case with a little seven-year-old girl and her mother's ex-boyfriend jumped out from behind a bush and shot her mother at point blank range and killed her while her daughter was holding her hand. I interviewed a sibling group of four about horrific abuse that was occurring in their house and it was just unbelievable their story and just how separated they were from the events to what was going on. And the children who come in for interviews, they're kids from all over the community. There's not one single segment of the population that is more susceptible to abuse than another. What brings a child to Sungate is, is very serious abuse. They may have observed very violent behavior, or they may have been the victim of a violent act. Sungate allows that child to come to a safe place and talk about it, for it to be recorded, and that they don't have to keep talking to professionals about what had occurred. And part of the reason Sungate was started was because we don't want kids to have to go to police departments to be interviewed. We don't want them to feel like they're in trouble for something. We do about 750 to 800 interviews a year at Sungate. 90% of the children that come here to Sungate, kids are victims of sexual abuse. And we also see a lot of children here who are witnesses to a horrific event like a homicide or domestic violence. When I was seven and came to Sungate, Sungate kept me comfortable and let me speak all my feelings. Tamisha witnessed a crime, um, a domestic violence crime, and a horrific crime. And she did such a wonderful job of helping her mother. The lady who talked to me was really nice and made me comfortable in the situation of talking to her about things that I didn't want to talk about. My eight-year-old daughter was molested. The perpetrator was a family friend and someone that we trusted. When a sex assault on a child case gets started, I'll call Sungate and set up a, an interview for the victim of the crime. It's this big yellow house, which first thing you think of is the sun and warm, and the minute you walk in the door, there's people that greet you that are warm and friendly. Sungate is an interesting mix of friendliness and functionality. We designed the building to be friendly because we feel that putting children at ease will also help us get a better disclosure from them. Sungate stands apart because of the quality and of the training and background of our forensic interviewers. Forensic interviewing is sitting down with a child and getting um, all the facts in regards to a human services case or a law enforcement case. It's really a search for the truth. If you're trained to talk to children in a forensic interview setting, the child takes the lead. The interviewer does not ask any leading questions or tries to stay away from leading questions because children do make excellent witnesses if they're asked the right questions. I've interviewed children as young as two all the way to 18. We try to get kids that are typically very verbal. Um, obviously we need to get as much information from them as possible. I've also interviewed um, adults who have developmental delays. When doing an interview, I have to show absolutely no emotion. I can't register shock, shame, fear. I don't cry. So that makes the child more comfortable when I'm telling their story. At the conclusion of the interview, those videotapes are given to the detective and the caseworker, and they take the additional copies as well. Every child that comes to Sungate gets to leave with a bear. If there's siblings that come with the child that we're interviewing and they don't happen to be interviewed by us, they do leave with a bear as well. I've received a couple of phone calls from the gals here just asking how things are going. They understand this. They've been through this with families, so they understand what we're experiencing. About September of 2003, I was selected to be on a jury. Had it not been for the Sungate tapes that were used as evidence, coming to the verdict would have been very, very difficult. Over the years, we've heard from detectives, from caseworkers, from district attorneys, and from the families themselves what a difference the tapes have made. I think Sungate can be one of the leading advocacy centers in the nation, and I'm excited to be part of that. 
My vision for Sungate is that we are able to help as many victims as there are out there in the community. Statistics show that sex abuse happened to one in four girls and one in six boys. And the chances are that you probably know a child that it's happened to. Sungate is a private nonprofit organization. We get a small amount of government funding, but beyond that, about 85% of our funding comes from the community. Sungate decided to auction off or to use the teddy bears as a symbol for their guardian angel program. It takes approximately $350 to run a child through the complete program. Without the funding, how will they be able to continue to do this and provide this service for their families? Corporately, we support Sungate. The Toywell Foundation supports Sungate, and my wife and I personally support Sungate. And we do it every year. And we will continue to do it every year. Imagine what it might be like for a five-year-old child who survived this trauma to be asked to talk about it. Well, I would ask you to imagine a world without a Sungate, and then ask you for your support in making sure that we have a world with a Sungate. I'm extremely thankful that Sungate was here for us. People think that this might be a dark or depressing place, but the fact is it's a really hopeful place. It's very fulfilling to know that I'm able to give these children an opportunity to tell their story and to feel empowered and feel that they have the ability to control whatever situation they may have been in. Child abuse. Talk about it. Sungatekids.org. <laughs>